Las Vegas Raiders. Chickster's been miserable. They're 0 and 3. And I, I just, I had a little question because I, you know, there was this NFL meeting that happened at the company. And one of the ideas was each person's going to record a reaction video to every Sunday. Hey, my team won, my team lost. Jackson's been doing the videos and Matt Hannafin's been doing the videos and James Herrick finally caught on to the idea and is doing the videos, but I have not seen any Raiders reactions on my phone. Why is that? I, I So I guess we're just talking about Chick for this last part. We're not <laughs> I just think it's totally outrageous that he has not recorded a reaction video when it was his idea and he took credit for it being his idea. And they're 0-3. Okay. And you know, what the, you know what this is? The sad truth of the matter is the fucking Raiders, they won, what, 11 games last year? They were outscored by 40-some points. They were never that good. They were never that good. In, in fact, this this year's Raiders team is probably better, and they're zero and three. That's just what happens. I mean, they could be three and zero. They could they they're zero and three. They're zero and three because the last GM, this shit catches up to you when you miss on so many draft picks. You're two or three players away from winning all those games. Well, you can't miss that many times. You can't do it. I mean, that's not all on Josh McDaniels. He's missing four or five guys that the team fucked him. So, I mean, as far as the chick thing is concerned, like, I didn't even know about the NFL reactions until, like, I saw Jackson doing it. And then I thought, oh, I thought that was just something Jackson was doing or was it just ended up being posted. Uh, I don't know. I feel like chick would, you know, I feel like, how do I say this? This is like his ultimate time to talk shit. Like, I feel like he, like, come out of the woodwork, get get your shit talk in, and then and then move on. Like, it's six how many times video. He's a coward I, because his team's losing. I'm just I'm just gonna say it like this. Like, I did I did see in the Slack. He was like, I, I'm going through it. The team is losing. I I would just like to say, there's been a lot of times. Like, I came on here and and did shows after the Eagles fucking lost and went on a 15 minute rant. So like, I know you get six people want to watch when you're fucking miserable. There was a YouTube uh, comment. Uh, J- James Herrick did his reaction. There was a YouTube comment that was like, Oh, you're way too chill about this. Lions lost. Like I wanted to see someone freaking out. Yeah, no shit. You know, you guys are allowed to be fucking mad when your team loses. You don't have to hide in a corner. It's crazy. I, I, I do think, I do think a chick, reaction video to a Raiders loss would be awesome to watch. Yeah. I think that would be fucking great. Yeah. So I, I think, I, I think there, he sitting there I think being he, a fucking powder. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't know. Look. I'll start doing the Raiders reaction videos. I don't care. Okay. That might be the fucking, uh, uh, I don't know. Doing. But I mean, as far as like the Raiders as a team are concerned, I feel like I, I, I felt like coming into the season that they, they needed Derek Carr to be fucking a rock star in order to be good. And I thought it was possible. I, 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 I've always agreed with chick. I feel, I feel like ever since Derek Carr put on the Raiders uniform, he got a bum rap because like the team around him wasn't great, but he played really good. And people were just like, Oh, Derek Carr sucks. Uh, but at the same time, Derek Carr this year so far through three games has not played good. He's no. not played good at all. He's missing open receivers. He's throwing a lot of interceptions. And the, if you look at it, the way they won their games last year, I mean, with the exception of the game they played against the Eagles, where they absolutely fucking kicked the shit out of us, uh, none of their games were, none of their wins were like, you know, they they won by like a, a field goal here and there, you know. Or, well, yeah, they, I mean, they were in one possession games the whole year. How many wins did get Daniel Carlson win them last year? It wasn't a good. Well, that's my team. point. If if that's how you're gonna win during the course of a season. Most likely, if you uh, what ends up happening is, is the next year those three point games end up going the other way. Yeah, I mean, and even think about it too. Like, was it last year when they played the Jets and the fucking the Jets were in zero coverage mm-hmm. on the last play of the yeah, game? Mike Williams handed them that game. Yeah. So here's my point on the Raiders. This isn't all on Josh McDaniels or the new GM or hey they. I mean, 
I thought they did a decent job. They get Devontae Adams. He's played well. They get Chandler Jones. Like, they tried to really improve the team. But my whole point on this was they're broken. This is a bad foundation. You're not winning a lot of football games with this. You can try your damn best, but best case scenario, you're going to be in these field goal games, and maybe they go your way, and maybe they don't. But this isn't a team that – not winning a Super Bowl with this team in the next five years. It's not happening. And, the, the, I mean, the reality of the situation is they got fucked. Like, let's – I mean, go through their drafts. Who'd they pick in the first round last year? Alex Leatherwood? Where's he? That's a guy that McDaniel should have on the field. Second rounder, Trayvon Morig. He's not good. I mean, go through their drafts. Who do they have from that Mayock era? Nice Henry, Ruggs, Broncos, Henry Ruggs got picked in the first round ahead of all those guys. Well, I mean, to be fair with that one, Ruggs was looking like he was going to be good. He was looking office. like he was going to be good, but even so, like. I, I don't I don't feel like you could I don't feel like you can blame like I've, obviously like there's been issues like their drafts haven't been great because I mean we wouldn't be where we are right now but I don't feel like you can blame the GM because Henry Ruggs got drunk and killed somebody doing a fucking hundred miles an hour you know driving I mean, down the street driving down the road like he was I, I thought he was clearly the fourth best guy though or fifth best guy well. I mean, they picked them 12th overall. Who, I mean, who do they have? I'm trying to think. I, I mean, I, I would agree. I feel like Hunter, I feel like Renfro was playing better than him, but that's also because Renfro had a couple like years at that point or maybe but a year or two. Over. This Raiders team has gotten fucked because the last guy that was drafting for him didn't know what he was doing. And my whole point on the Raiders sh- ha- has been the same. They should have tore this thing down, they should have started over and rebuilt. And that pouring resources into a broken foundation is never a way to win football games. And we sit here and they're the only 0-3 team. They're yeah. only, what, a couple plays away from being 3-0. and But it's fucking the draft decisions. Imagine they have Devin White out there playing linebacker instead of Cleveland Farrell. Might have you an extra win. Well, I mean, they, they should be 1-3 after Sunday, right? Who do they play Sunday? The Broncos. I don't know if they're going to win that game. I think they can. I they think can. their offense. I think their offense is better than than Denver's. Like, I mean, Denver. I mean, I don't know if this is true, but I feel like it's true. What have they scored? Like one touchdown the entire season in yeah. three games. It feels like. I'm not. I I'm mean, not at, least, say, at least you can say what you want about the Raiders, but at least they're they're, they're scoring touchdowns for the most. I part. don't think that was a question before the year, though. We knew they were going to score sometimes. Yeah, but that's that's my point. I feel like I feel like they'll score against the Broncos. But look at these I fucking. I feel decisions. like the Broncos probably won't score against them. They have lost three close games, and it all comes down to fucking boneheaded decisions. Why are you picking Damon Arnett in the third in the second round? What are you doing? Don't have enough corners on the field. Why are you picking Lynn Bowden Jr. in the third round? Well, I mean, it is what it is at this point. Why are you taking Alex Leatherwood in fucking twelfth or something? What do we do? What are we talking about? Is he even still on the team? No. Okay, I didn't think so. <laughs> but I mean, there, there's at least twelve in here. Twelve horrific decisions, and if they just get half of them right, they're probably three and out, two and one. Yeah. Well, it is like I said, it is what it is. They, 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 they won. They, it's a double-edged sword. Like, you know, last year, they just happened to be on that one edge of the sword. where and they, they were they outscored them the whole year. They had a negative point differential and had a winning record. It's not going to, it's not going to happen every time. Well, yeah. It's not going to go your way. But I mean, yeah. at the same time, like, who knows? I mean, they're 0-3. Yes. But I mean, it's a fucking 17 game season. I'm not like, saying they're that? done, but the this idea that they're going to run away with the AFC West or that they're fucking some magical dark horse Super Bowl team is nuts. No, I don't. I don't think they're a Super Bowl team. I don't. I don't think that was ever in the cards. Like I don't think that was ever going to happen, just based off of how they played last year. And I mean, obviously, how I'm they not sure the now. playoffs are in the cards, Chad. 
Huh? Are the playoffs in the cards? I mean, they could be. They would have – I mean, they got really lucky in some points last year. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we talk about, like, that whole field goal situation at the end of the year when they were playing the fucking uh, Chargers, right? Yeah. Where, they like, if they, so kick, many if they, if they get the tie, classes. like, so and, like, whatever happens, happens. But I feel like they're – That I mean, job they, was a suicide mission. That job should have been seen as a suicide mission. You were walking into that thing knowing that your team wasn't that good. They got lucky last year. They were outscored on the year and won 11 games. You were replacing an interim coach who was a nobody. You're going to have to somehow outdo him. Like, people laughed at me. The Jacksonville job was way better. The Jacksonville job is just way better than the Raider job. It just is. It always was. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I think I think the Raiders they they may turn around, but at the same time, I'm not expecting them to. <laughs> like and I don't. Decisions. This is what happens. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think Josh McDaniels. I don't think he gets fired or anything after this year. I feel no, like. No, but there's a lot of people coming down on him. Hey, Josh McDaniels is the problem. Like the old fucking people fucked them, and this was a suicide mission. And nothing that has happened should be surprising. Maybe Josh McDaniels just is not fit for the fucking AFC West. Like maybe it's, it's just like he he should have known. Like, hey, I was with Denver and they're in the AFC West and they I did fucking terrible. Let me fucking stay away from that division. But I actually think it's bullshit to come down like, hey, McDaniels is the problem. Look at them; they're zero and three. Like, this was a sinking ship. This was a broken foundation. I don't like I said, they might turn it around. I don't think they're going to. At least at least not this year. I think I think depending on what they can do in the offseason this year, maybe they'll be good next year. But I don't I don't think I think this year they're gonna miss the playoffs. And uh, I mean I I they may ha- they may be a, a sub five hundred team come the end of the season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gave up two first round. I, picks I do think Broncos, they'll beat right? the Broncos though. And then he gave up another first round pick for Devontae. You can't do it. Well, he's great. Don't get me wrong. He's great. And if you're a fucking a team that's ready to to win the division and go to the Super Bowl, you can do that trade. Not with this team. But that's the thing. I don't think that's terrible. I mean, obviously Devontae no, is he's not gonna have the same longevity as a draft pick is, but at the same time, I feel like Devontae, what is he? He's only like 26, 27. Like you yeah. should, you'll have him for a few years. Like he's twenty nine. Is he okay? He's older than I thought he was, but I don't know. But with a broken team and a team that has missed five straight first round picks, you can't do it. Yeah, I I would if he was a little if Davante was like twenty seven, like I thought he was, I would say it's not that big of a deal. But the, if he's almost thirty, I feel like yeah, that's a little bit of a bigger deal. Well, the Packers it. have the first overall pick right now, right? Is that correct? Well, I mean, if they have the Raiders pick, yeah. I think they do. Let me look it up. Maybe I'm wrong. Do they not have their pick next year? Ugh. I'm not, like, I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. I have to look it up, too. Yeah, I guess they don't have their pick next year. Maybe they, maybe they did. I don't know. Did they trade Devontae? I yeah, thought Devontae's contract was just up. It was a first and second rounder. All right. So that's okay. Yeah, first rounder this year, right? Yeah. And then next year is a second rounder. But yeah, I don't know. Obviously, bad decisions were made. That's an understatement. And it's going to, I mean, it's going to cost them this year, but who knows? Like I said, maybe they get back on track next year. But that's what happens with this stuff. The draft affects you three years down the road four years down the road five years down the road that's when you start feeling it you miss a draft the following year they're just rookies it bites you in the ass three years from now four years from now i mean 
Can we talk? If we're talking about the draft, can we talk about Howie Roseman playing fucking 3D chess? Yeah, I'm gonna take Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson. The Vikings take Justin Jefferson. Now, fucking Jalen Rager's with the Vikings, and guess yeah. what? We stomped the shit out of the Vikings. We Justin yeah. Jefferson had fucking what does he have? Like one catch for like nine yards. Is that your spin zone you're going with? Yeah, that's fucking Howie Roseman, 3D chess. <laughs> Oh, he knew that he could. He knew that he could beat them this year if he got Rager and Jefferson on the same team. Is, isn't that's, it amazing what, what winning does? Winning does. Huh? <laughs> it's amazing what winning does. You know. <laughs> Howie Roseman, the ultimate fucking uh, strat- uh, strat- strategy guy. I don't know. All right, Chad. What do you got on the Lions and Seahawks? Quick. No, I just want to. I mean, as far as the Lions are concerned, I mean. The Lions are two and one. They got Jared Goff at quarterback, and I don't know. No, one and two. One Dan, and two. Dan, I, I'm a Dan Campbell fan now. Yeah, I am too. I mean, with the exception of the Eagles game, like I said before, like, yeah, they came back. They made it close at the end. But, I mean, that game, I mean, until the fourth quarter, it wasn't close. Like, hmm. the Lions are – I can't believe I'm saying this in my lifetime, but the Lions are playing some good football right now. And they fucking care and they play hard. Yeah. If I mean, again, we kind of talked about Brian Flores, but like, if it, if his teams were playing like this Dan Campbell team, he probably wouldn't yeah. have gotten fired. Easy. Because like, yeah, yeah like Dan Campbell. I mean, Brian Flores, he was like doing a good job, like keeping it close. And I mean, yeah, they were in the hunt, but like they had a good defense. They were starting zero and four every year. Yeah. Like you can't start zero and four and expect to make the fucking playoffs. You can't fire three straight offensive coordinators and have four different offensive line coaches. Yeah. Can't do it. Uh, fucking the Lions should be three and one because, like, I don't know. See, Seattle's not been good. So there's no reason why I don't think the Lions win this game. I win this game, too. They very well could. They're six and a half point favorites. When the fuck was and the last think- time the Lions were six and a half point favorites? Over anybody. I think, and this might have changed after week three, but I think going into week three, like the Lions, um, <clears throat> they're, they were averaging like the most yards before contact when running the ball. Like they were they were at like four or five yards before they're contact. They're committed to the run. run. They're committed exactly. to the run. Their, their offensive line is really good. But not even that just that they're committed to the run – I mean, like you said, their offensive line's really good. Like, if you're getting, like, three or four yards before you're even getting fucking touched, like, that means you're blowing guys off, blowing guys off the line of scrimmage. Swift got hurt a couple weeks with the shoulder, but he's nasty. Yeah. He is fucking nasty. I mean, as long, I mean, obviously, like, the running back does matter, but, I mean, as long as you have a good offensive line, like, you can really plug anybody in there. It may not be as good, but you still get good results. Yeah, I, I, I like what the Lions are doing. I do. And I, I was I picked the wrong fucking St. Brown. I was so high on his his brother, who yeah. used to be with the Packers, and I don't know where he is now. The Bears. If I had known it was Amon Ra that I needed on my fantasy team, I would have been all right. <laughs> How many fucking years did I have fucking his brother on the team? He, yeah. Equinemius, and he didn't do shit. Yeah. Well, that's, I, I was going to convince the Ramon. brother was going to suck because of him. Yeah. Clearly, I was wrong. But notorious weightlifter. Did you watch the Hard Knocks? No, I haven't seen Hard Knocks this oh, year. Oh, he's in the gym all the time. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and apparently, he knows all 16 receivers that went ahead of him in order. He was in the Hard Knocks episode. Good for him. Yeah. Love to see it. Mm-hmm. Any closing thoughts with Seattle, or you don't have anything on Seattle? Oh, uh, I mean, I, I want to say it was a big mistake to let Russell Wilson go, but apparently, <laughs> based off what he's doing in Denver, it wasn't that big of a mistake. He, I, I'm, like, stunned with what's going on with Denver. And I guess this is about Seattle, but, man, yikes. And Geno Smith has played better than him. Yeah. He has. That's what, well, <laughs> I mean, 
played better than him in the sense that when they played head to head, Geno Smith won. Versus Geno Smith has better numbers on the year, on the whole year. Yeah, he definitely does. Well, like I said, I think would it? I could be wrong, but Denver has what one touchdown in three games, and their clock management is horrible. True. I mean, even Eli Manning said it last night. Should have fucking paid the punter for all that money they gave Russ. Did you see that? <laughs> no, I should start watching the Manning cast. Honestly, I usually like it more than the normal broadcast, but last night they had Tracy Morgan on there, and I didn't really know how to feel about it because, okay. like, Tracy Morgan was, like, completely ignoring, like, everything that Eli and Peyton said. So it was, like, kind of funny, but at a certain point it was like, okay, this is kind of sad. Like, Tracy Morgan's out here talking like somebody with CTE. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. All right. Uh, what else? Any any bold predictions for next week? Then we can wrap it up. No, no, no bold predictions. No bold predictions. I mean, if you if you count the Eagles being four and zero, a bold prediction, then no. Okay. Eagles four and zero, Miami four and zero. Only un- they're the only two unbeaten teams left, right? Miami and Philly. Yes. Yeah, I like that. I like to hear both, that. Both Alabama quarterbacks undefeated. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, Chad. Anything, anything else last from you, Trey? Uh, I just – I think it might be preparing a war against the Pittsburgh Steelers fans. That's all I know. <laughs> oh, they I deserve it. Hey, I called them a poverty franchise for signing Mitch Trubisky. They got mad at me, and look at what has happened to them. Well, if it was up to me, I would have traded Jalen Hurts for draft picks at the start of the season. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say anything and get yelled at because, like I, like I said, I, I wanted Jalen to be good. I just wasn't sure if he would be. I'm glad that he is, though. Yeah. Well, that'll about do it for this episode. We'll uh, just so everybody knows, we recorded this Tuesday uh, in the morning. So hopefully, this gets posted either Wednesday or Thursday morning sometime. Uh, I don't know. We've had producer issues. We don't have a producer right now. Hopefully we don't have editing issues now going forward. Um, but uh, you can follow me on Twitter at low footed, follow Trey at Trey Daubert. Uh, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, you can follow the site on Twitter at Vendetta uh, VSM. Go check out our Instagram page. Uh, you could like us on Facebook too. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, well, you'd have to be watching it on YouTube. Uh, like, <laughs> like, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. So you get notifications. Uh, I think that's about everything. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll uh, see you next week.